This episode brought to you by HelloFresh. Delicious pre-measured ingredients and simple chef-made recipes delivered to your doorstep every week. Also brought to you by Honey, the easiest way to save money when you're shopping online. Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. I'll be honest, the only reason I want to review this movie is to give this 90s cartoon justice. Tonight I'll be reviewing Home Alone 5. We left Kevin home alone, and he's only 23! Ah! Not only were they right, but they were right twice! Home Alone, The Holiday Heist, was a TV movie released in 2012 and was the fifth film in the Home Alone franchise. Hard to believe that when this joke was made, they thought five was a comedically high number, not realizing they were still off by one. I guess it's becoming a Christmas tradition to review all these films, which, at the rate they keep making them, I should be done by the time they stop making Star Wars movies. Like always, though, I have to ask the foolish question, is there anything of value in this movie? Was this a secret masterpiece that snuck under the radar and is it even worth finishing that question? You already know the answer is... <laughs> Granted, the director does have a few good movies under his belt, but some not-so-good ones, too. So I'm not holding out much hope. Let's jump into one of the many regrets we continue to self-inflict on ourselves. This is Home Alone, the one before the other one you really hate. Gotta love how the atmospheric credits of the early films are replaced with- Yup, you accidentally put this on, can't turn back now. Your kid's ADD has latched on to it. Oh, you look at that snow! Never got that in California. I bet they have better keying technology, though. This is the Baxter family, who's moving to a new house, but their youngest son, Finn, is intimidated by their new home. It's super creepy. Oh, come on, buddy, don't be ridiculous. That creepy, it's oh. great. Movie, I will pay you my life savings if the kids trying to get the people out of the house are the kids from the others. F off, that's technically not a spoiler. It's so homey once we get all their stuff moved in, but look at all the space. I see so many possibilities for traps here. The realtor is there as well and welcomes them to the home. Oh, and you must be the wee ones. I thought we lost that name when mom remarried. They're not very good with real people. They're better with space robots and cell phones. I look forward to that observation not being overused in movies with parents. <sighs> Welcome, Mr. Hugh. We're then introduced to a powerful man named Sinclair, played by the master of paycheck performances, Malcolm McDowell. Every time I see him, I want to give him that Ben Affleck speech from Goodwill Hunting. One of these days, I don't want to see you here anymore. Who, of course, is planning a break into the Baxter's house. Which MacGuffin do you think it'll be this time? Rare diamonds, spy technology, or priceless work of art? He was the previous owner of a priceless work, work of art. Wiley Coyote changes his formula more than this franchise. Give the sister Alexis credit. I truly believe she doesn't want to be in this movie. You want to come on downstairs and help your mom and me unpack? I'd rather die. Perfect. Favorite character. The father thinks Finn is spending too much time playing games, so he has him help unpack. And tell me if you've heard this one. The boy is afraid of the basement. <laughs> Just be happy somebody's watching this. He goes across the street to try and make a friend with one of the neighbor kids. Her thing is snow. Snowman, make snowballs, go snow sledding, design snow forts, make snow angels. You wanna know what my favorite Game of Thrones line is? You snow not pass! She says the place is haunted by a gangster and Finn should fear for his life. I'd like to hang out with you, but I'm too young to die. I still have so much snow to snow. I was written in a minute. He gets so freaked out that, you guessed it, he sets traps in his room. We can move back to California. You're an idiot. Alexis, don't call your brother an idiot. He is a dumb <laughs> Idiots are lazier. The burglars discover the house is occupied and decide to wait for the perfect time. We'll strike. 
Mm. I have this foolproof plan where I say someone's injured on the side of the road, and I really shouldn't continue there if I want this video to be monetized. Pass away the, old year passes. the family goes shopping for a Christmas tree while the burglars try to break in. Chocolate covered coconut macaroons were Steve's favorite. Oh, did I mention one of the burglar's quirks is she cries all the time because she misses the criminal who broke up with her? We were supposed to have a house together. Oh, for goodness sake. Can you please just return my calls? It hurts even more when you realize he technically broke up with her twice. They crack the safe, but discover there's nothing inside. The family returns and they scramble to get out, but not before McDowell sees they'll be out of town for a Christmas party. Finn notices, though, several factors that prove something was moving around the house. Okay, there's nothing there. I'm just gonna check it out. But Dad, wait! Please, kids, I just happened to look exactly like Sean Hannity. Why would anyone want to hurt me? <gasps> Though he finds nothing, he too gets freaked out that there might be something inside the house. Let's look on the GPS to see where that goes. Yep, just what I thought. The day of the big party arrives, but the kids don't want to go, so they leave them behind. No games, no TV, no music, no phone. Well, that's how they're getting around calling the cops. What about emergencies? Emergencies. Thank you, honey. Okay, I give credit. They acknowledge this could have been written stupider. While the burglars are getting ready to break in, they find the person in the painting they're looking for is actually Sinclair's great-grandmother. She's seen sitting with her children. <laughs> her family. My family. She belongs to me. So did Home Sweet Home Alone look at this setup and say, Hey, feeling bad for the crooks makes no sense here. We can really have it make no sense in the next one. I'm eating junk food! I don't care! So really this film could be called Kinda Home Alone, as the sister is still there and all of Finn's acting out seems random and out of nowhere. It's a big thing when you're a little kid and no one's around. This is like being home with your sibling. It's not like that at all. It's exactly being home with your sibling. Why is this a big deal? I broke the lamp! I can't hear you. I will give him a point for this legit laugh, though. <laughs> you sold me on that one. There's another surprise laugh at the party where Ed Asner plays a very awkward and possibly insane boss who orders Finn's father to get him a drink. My mistake. He's the spitting image of Albert, my butler, now deceased. I'll give Home Alone 5 this. It is randomly surreal. And you have kids too! Uh, Seven of them! Two. Oh, it's probably for the best. All those clutching little hands. On the one hand, it is kind of cool that comedy legend Ed Asner is getting the biggest laughs, but on the other hand, it should never be Ed Asner that's getting the biggest laughs. While Finn does his impression of Jim Carrey's Riddler, <laughs> he loses a controller battery downstairs and asks his sister to go get it. She discovers the safe and a whole lot more, a secret room within the vault. Aw, they have a family portrait of the Voldemorts. She's watching you. <laughs> I'd say this looks familiar, but what if the Home Alone movies ever repeated anything? Touch my hooch and regret it. Alexis accidentally locks herself in as it almost feels like a horror movie for a minute. Ben, can you hear me? Ben! Which it could be if they included a certain cameo. Ah! Come on, Google, I just gave you your commercial next year. Hey, snowman on wrapping paper. What's up, Santa on wrapping paper? Do you think we're being used too much this holiday season? Yes. No. I don't know. Just get to the point so we can get back to the video. Oh, okay. Maybe the best gifts are the ones that don't need wrapping paper. You don't say. Tell me more. Like HelloFresh. HelloFresh a gift? To yourself. Okay, sure. With HelloFresh, you get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Santa, don't say a word of cat. Oh, shh. 
Okay, he's gone. The holidays can be hectic, but HelloFresh helps keep things simple with recipes that cut back on meal prep and cleanup. So you can spend less time in the kitchen and more quality time with friends and family. You yeah, know what you mean. HelloFresh meals are ready in around 30 minutes or less. Plus, with their quick and easy meals, 20-minute recipes, or low prep and easy cleanup options, you can get food on the table quicker so you can spend more holiday time with loved ones. I agree. Why would I cook with HelloFresh? Wrapping paper cooks. Wrapping paper cooks. Science behind that. I, okay, sure. I find it very easy because I'm not the best cook, but HelloFresh makes it so simple, fast, and delicious, I can hardly believe it. Admittedly, it is hard to cook without iron. Just go to HelloFresh.com slash Critic14 and use the code Critic14 for up to 14 free meals and three free gifts. Wait a minute, you're saying if I go to HelloFresh.com slash Critic14 and use the code Critic14, I can get up to 14 free meals and three gifts? Did I Stutter? Oh, calm down, wrapping paper sandwich. I'm sorry, I just get so passionate about HelloFresh and this special offer. I can see why. I think the people watching should definitely go there. Indeed. See why HelloFresh is still America's number one meal kit. Shh, shh, the cats hurt us. Oh, no! Oh, great, we're dead. Just move on to the next one, wrapping paper sandwich. I had a good life, but you know what made it really good? Honey. Oh man, those claws We hurt. all shop online, and we've all seen that promo code feel taunt us at checkout. But thanks to Honey, manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past. Ow! Ow! Stop it! Ow! Oh, and I'll take over. Honey is the free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart. Honey supports over 30,000 stores Ow. online. They range from sites that have tech and gaming products to popular fashion brands and even food delivery. What, what are they doing now? What, no, don't happening? do that, don't what, do that. What, what, ah! Just keep going, just keep okay, going. Okay, imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites. When you check out, the honey button drops down and all you have to do is click apply coupons. Wait a few seconds as Honey searches for coupons it can find for that site. If Honey finds a working coupon, you'll watch the prices drop. Crazy, right? Honey has found its over 17 million members over $2 billion in savings. Just look at this here I got with Honey, this mini Nintendo replica with over 600 games. And I saved like 35 bucks with it. 35 bucks, that's crazy! Well, even paying attention to us cats hog all the internet's attention. Well, they should be paying attention because if you don't already have Honey... Hey, come back over here, cameraman! Hey, come on! Come on, leave the cat alone. If you don't already have honey, you could be straight up missing out on free savings. It's literally free to install in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting our videos. Yeah, I never recommend something I don't use, and I use this to save a lot of money. It really does work. Okay, that's a lot better. Oh, are you oh, kidding me? Oh, okay. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash nostalgia. That's joinhoney.com slash nostalgia to start saving money today. Money you can use to stop cats from ruining sponsorships. Oh, 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 Stop oh. it, we're wrapping paper. We don't feel anything. Am I considered alive if I don't feel pain? Wow. Parents are snowed in at the party, and Finn is under the impression his sister went to the mall but is really trapped downstairs. He talks to another player who beats him all the time at his favorite video game, and we're, I guess, given an emotional moment. I don't really do the whole Christmas thing since I don't live with my folks anymore. If you're alone, it's not really Christmas. I never thought about it like that before. This is like Kevin talking to Marley if the first time he ever saw him was in the church. Kevin's look here would take on a whole new meaning. He'd be like, who the f is this guy? I actually kind of want to see that movie. Get me out of here! Alexis? Finn finally puts together that Alexis is downstairs and tries to figure out a way to bust her out. Want to make snowballs with me? I can't right now. My sister is trapped in the basement and I have to buy supplies to break her out. Oh, cool! I also have to tell Wardrobe to lay off the in-jokes. This doesn't invite any questions. What can I get for a dollar and 68 cents? You get a fuller house joke like the one you just told. He bumps into Sinclair and discovers they're trying to break into his home. Help me finish my snow fort? I can't right now. A team of art thieves are planning an assault on my new house, and I'm the only one who can defend it. Oh, cool! Why do I feel like this newspaper heading is in the near future? He lets Alexis know about the burglars, but she doesn't believe him. Time to call the proper authorities. Sam from the Ghost Beach episode of Goosebumps. It's the only entry I've recognized from his IMDb. He misinterprets Finn's story for a video game, and he instead gives him advice he would give in a video game. Sounds like a tower defense game? Like level 17 on Robo Infantry 3! Or those sequels actors leave off their resumes! I can do that. 
Yeah, I know you can, dude. You're like the smartest kid I know. Aside from, you know, calling the cops with your cell phone, I actually would have bought the mother taking it more by this point. He sets up the traps and thankfully master cloning to speed up the process. The only thing to be afraid of in this house is me. I believe you. With dangerous criminals sneaking in, that sister you completely forgot about is totally dead. I like they at least notice the slippery walkway and try to find another way in. Of course, setting off a different trap. Oh! Oh, the house has a mind of its own. Uh, unlike someone I know. They actually put one of the writers in front of him to make that line sound the most convincing. Tell me if this makes any sense to you. <laughs> Like, maybe three are hitting him. It's like they're going out of their way to avoid his body. <laughs> he's not even reacting the few times he's getting hit. Sinclair is like, even by cartoon logic, I don't follow that. <sighs> Alexis gets so bored she starts reading War and Peace. Put that on the box art. <laughs> As here's a surprise, another trap goes off. <laughs> Steve, did we give up on that joke? I can't remember. Finn lets his friend know what's going on and he finally realizes it's not a game. I, I, I've got to call the cops or, 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 or your parents or like Jack Bauer or something. Or the Lorax or Life of Pi or 2012 thing. He doesn't tell him where he lives though because get this, stranger danger. Stranger danger? There are people trying to invade your home. Gotta go. Is it too late to follow the B story with the snowball girl? Alexis as well finally puts together this is real and tells him to call the cops. But the phone is dead. Aw oh, man, nobody keeps a charger at their home. If they get to you, we go with plan B. Plan B? What are you talking about plan B? Murder, suicide. That sounded better in my brain. Don't cut your head off yet. Hello? The parents finally manage to make their way back just as the best friend gives him a call. I'm worried something bad is gonna happen to me. Are you threatening my son? And your daughter is locked in the basement. You kidnapped my kids? What? Again, I'll spotlight the few chuckles. I guess I missed the part where her hair turned like that. I'll just assume it wasn't funny. This calls for cookies. When I get scared, I need sweets. I'm an emotional Because idiot. yeah, another trap can happen that way. Ooh. This is feeling less like ripping off the ending of Home Alone and more like the middle of Three Ninjas. Oh, did I mention one of the subplots is Finn trying to make the burglars think the place is haunted? And they buy it. Who dares enter my domain and not believe? I am real! This might be really stupid. Believe in me! Okay, Nickelodeon's interpretation of the lodge is ambitious but troubled. The parents trace back the number the best friend called from and I guess swat him. Which maybe he deserves, seeing how he knows two kids are in trouble, yet he just goes back to gaming. I just play video games. God! <laughs> I think that's the most far-fetched thing in the movie. We all know how that would really go down. God! <laughs> they finally figure out it was a kid literally pulling the string, so they lock him in the van and try to get back into the vault. But don't worry, snowballs. Oh, oh. no, 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 let me explain. Wait, oh. It's like with every one of these I see, I want to apologize more to Home Alone 2. Alexis threatens destroying the painting, leading to one of the more grisly lines of the movie. A painting ripped in half can be repaired. The same cannot be said for little girls. Ooh, more 70s Malcolm McDowell, please. Finn gets free and closes the door just as Alexis gets out. The two crooks are trapped in the third one. What's going on? Wait. Kid, 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 help me, I can't move. Do you realize the horror movie version of this is unintentionally funnier than the intentionally funny version of this? It is accompanied though by two surprisingly good jokes. One is while the crooks don't slip on the ice, the SWAT team does, and it's followed by- oh, Guys, <laughs> come on, not again. Golf clap, that was good. The parents return home, the day is saved, and they discover the painting is worth millions. Mook! Scandinavian guy he painted <gasps> the scream. What? The scream! You know this! Oh, Dad. Ah! Oh. We had a good joke with the SWAT team, and then you, you know, Home Alone 5'd it. 
Is there a reward? There's a reward, right? Four free member passes to the museum. That's no reward. Well, it would have been more if he didn't make that joke. They say they did get $30,000, though, for capturing the thieves. Thank God, because it really looked like this family was tight on money. In an attempt to trick you into thinking this was about something, they tell Simon they're buying him a plane ticket to see his family. But even the movie barely cares as it tries to rush it by as quickly as possible. That's unbelievable. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Wanna play? Yeah. Don't worry, Mom and Dad, we're sure you're done <laughs> while you put this on for your kids. We'll wrap up now. It actually picks a very random point to stop. They take the burglar's mug shots, and that's it. No witty line or anything, they just take their mug shots. You wasted a police station set on that? You paid these actors an extra day just for that couple of seconds no one will remember? And there's actually one more of these after this stinker? Yep, Home Alone 5's pretty bad. But is anyone really shocked by this? It set a very low expectation and met it pretty adequately. It almost feels silly to get angry at it, and yeah, I guess it kind of is. It's not a sin against nature. I mean, Lord knows I've seen so many worse family films. It's just forgettable and tired. I'll give credit, there were a few chuckles in it, which isn't much, but it's certainly more than I was expecting. It's just a lame, run-of-the-mill family TV movie. Probably not worth waving your fist in the air, but definitely not worth wasting your time watching it either. It doesn't work in the exact way you would think it doesn't work. No reason to check it out to see any surprises. I'm a nostalgia critic, guy. Remember it so you don't have to. Hello, Baxters! <laughs> Hey, Doug Walker here doing a charity shout out, and the charity of this week was a recommendation, so thank you so much for that. Uh, it is called First Star. Uh, this was founded in 1999 as a National 501 public charity dedicated to improving life for child victims of abuse and neglect. It improves the lives of foster youth by partnering with child welfare agencies, universities, and school districts to ensure foster youth have the academic, life skills, and adult supports needed to successfully transition to to higher education and adulthood. They pursue their mission through innovative college uh, preparatory programs, providing technical assistance to stakeholders, and advocating for policy change. Uh, since 2011, First Star has pioneered support programs to launch foster children into productive lives and careers through higher education. And they have a four-star rating on Charity Navigator, so this is definitely a really, really good one to check out. Uh, thank you so much for the recommendation. Again, and go check out the site, see if it's something you're interested in, uh, you know, yeah, maybe you can volunteer at it or uh, donate to it. If not, as always, just spread the word about the good that people are doing. This is a wonderful time to spread the good that uh, so many people are doing. So that's about it, and I'll see you next time. Take care.